Welcome back. In a nutshell, become aware of the I am. And realize that what you are is beyond the I am. It's even deeper. I am. Everything inside the I am will let go of you. F program. Where of the I am, all appearances as their root, higher manifestation, accessible as your sense of I, that foundational, ever present me or I am. Then, after sufficient amount of time, Observing that, concentrating on it, becoming clearer on it, letting it fill you with understanding and bliss and a sense of oneness over time. Seeing that all things belong to the I am, everything that's experiential, experienceable, belongs to the experiencer of those experiences, which is the I am. So the whole universe, which is experience, belongs to the experiencer, which is the I am. And observing the I am, begin to stand apart from the I am and realize that there's something even older than God. Stay in that, at that threshold. Allow it to set you free, suck you in, if you will. program. Enough to practice for a lifetime. Steps. So what's a really helpful meditation I've found anyway, especially when you're interacting with the world. Let's say you're by yourself in meditation. You can really turn your attention away from the world, away from interacting with form and go focus only on awareness, being aware of its own self-existence. Boom. Right? Because you don't have to do anything. You don't have to answer to anybody. You don't have to have any conversations or pay attention to traffic or whatever. So I don't recommend you do that type of exclusive practice while you're driving a car or operating machinery. Or Over time, they'll become easier naturally as, it, as you get used to it. But... Um, but I don't recommend that as a practice generally. So, what you, But what you can do while you're walking around and you're driving your car and you can become aware of how everything is happening inside of the eye. You can almost visualize the I am as something that's not quite over here, but almost as if it's sort of this metaphysical camera that's floating above your entire experience the whole time. Everything is a projection belonging to that sort of projector or camera, however you want to visualize that. So it's like the I, which is conscious, the I exists, which is conscious, which is aware, is aware of the whole scenery as if from somewhere over there, somewhere from the space. So your feelings, your bodies are happening to that I am. Other people walking around and someone shouting and loud noise or whatever it is, it's happening, it's being registered by that I am. Give everything to that I am, and you almost feel as if it's not, it's not located in the body. You kind of begin to imagine it as if it's in outer space or just here above your body. And that your body, too, is part of the entire canvas that is being projected inside of that I am the root of which you just visualize somewhere, kind of like a receiver point, a root point, a camera point. Does that make sense? So let's see if I can draw that a little bit.
So there you are walking around in the dream bubble of consciousness. And, you know, there's a... This is a tree. This is not broccoli. This is the broccoli. It's other people. They're trying to interact with you, but you're not interested. Because they don't have anything to offer you. But they're really happy. You still don't care. There's a car about to hit them. They have to pay attention. I don't know what kind of car this is. But... So we... <laughs> There's the moon, some stars, the universe, etc., etc. Cool, you get the point. So usually you feel like you're located here. So you project, you actually project this feeling of I inside your heart or inside your head or wherever you may feel that, or just your body as a whole. You do this all the time on automatic pilot. Why? Because your perception is set up in such a way that your sense perceptions give you the sense that you're located at the center point where all these senses come together. And obviously, if I turn my head like this, the world seems to turn from this point of view. So as we grow older, like one year old, two years old, three years old, and bump my foot into an object, and I feel it over here, then I look to the right, everything seems to change in accordance from this point of view. So you then begin to automatically project that consciousness is here. So this is the old way of looking at yourself like that. Or maybe maybe you got into spirituality and incense and now you see the world from the heart. <laughs> to counteract that habit, which is all it is, it's conditioning. Picture something over here. I am consciousness. Again, don't get hung up on the words because it's not about the words. They're just tools. They're bridges. Anytime you get confused about the words, drop the words and remember this. That which I am or feel I am before I use any words. Before any words, I already know that I am. That direct experience is what any of these words point to and that's what it's about it's not about the right using the right words so whatever word for you helps you connect to that pre-verbal pre-thought state of i am state of being right so this then is the dreamer this is the root of the dream all of this is happening here. Maybe you have a state of being that you're feeling, a certain frequency, whatever it is. Everything you experience happens to the experiencer. So you projected or you imagine that it's somewhere in outer space and that this whole world is happening there. So while you're walking around, interacting with people or seeing things happen, anything, senses, you just experience it as if it's happening to the I am, including your body. So you've 
in a sense, disowned, disidentified, or disidentified the I from the body. And now you start to experience a certain spaciousness of freedom. So this both has the effect of loosening up the habit or conditioning of feeling like you're inside the body. Whoop. But it also loosens up your association with the I am itself, ironically. So it's a bit of a double practice. It also reinforces this. So from this, now you're projecting it over here, inclusive of your body. Because again, remember the painter that always paints himself in the picture? You cannot distinguish. You cannot say the painting is only that body and the rest of the painting is not the painting. Same with the body. It's part of the whole experience, right? So anything here is equal. It's an equal amount of you or not you. But this body is equally you as this tree is equally you because it's all happening within the same canvas. You can't separate one element out of the painting and call that you and call the rest of the painting not you. I mean, you could do that. That's what you've been doing. So clearly it's possible. That's what we've been taught. But this is a way to generate a sense of oneness, a sense of distance, or spaciousness or disidentification from the focal point of the body and lo location makes you more aware of a sense of locationless isness or I exist. Locationless pure existence. That's, that's this. And you generate a sense of inseparability. You begin to feel how the whole world is actually existing in here because of the locationless I am. So it's the I am that's responsible for the whole world. If you project this out of your body, it has all these benefits. And, um, and as a result, because you're generating the sense that it's not in your body, but you put it out there in space, observing inclusive of this whole scenery, you're also beginning the process of seeing that you're not that consciousness. Does that make sense? You create a distance there too. And in that distance, in this distance, somewhere in this space, the intuitive sense of the absolute begins to dawn on you. And then, whoop, when you really penetrate, have a penetrative experience, that's when everything whoop, disappears. And you realize that there's only one complete, infinite, perfect me. This is me. This is the me before the I, or before the I am. This is me before the God. So that means that while you're walking, you, have to con you can start with some kind of a mantra, but continuously repeat the feeling that, that all of this is happening inside of something else. It's being observed by this camera. It's almost like you're, it's like you're part of the actor in a movie, and you know that the end, in the end result, it's all happening inside the camera, and the viewers are going to watch the whole scenery on one simple two-dimensional screen. So that screen is, is inclusive of your entire world. Your entire world is actually captured by, is actually existing only holographically as an illusion inside of the screen of the I am. Does that make sense? So just play with this. I mean, you ha you're creative naturally by nature, so you can play with this. Give everything to that. And you'll notice there's things that you want to separate out and suddenly like claim that something belongs to you. Maybe a trigger happens. Maybe you feel triggered by something. And you collapse back into the sense of whoop, consciousness is inside of here and I'm inside of a world. Then generating this feeling of separation of, of me. Now the absolute 
because this is so active with imagery and experience, it forgets that it is apart from the I am. And not only does it forget that, it also forgets the stability, the eternal presence of I am. And it completely identifies with just a small portion of the canvas of its own painting. So it's completely in its own delusion. And it has this feeling of limitation. So the triggers happen, and you believe this has to do with me, and there's something outside myself which can affect me, or triggers me. This solves all that. So if in that moment, let's say you're triggered, you're intensely triggered, you feel the sensations of limitation, you give that to the cameraman as well. You give that to the great I am. You give that to the I consciousness. Because where is it happening? You, the feeling of your body feeling triggered and your emotions being triggered and your nervous system freaking out, all of that is being registered. Consciousness is responsible for that observation. It's being experienced by the I am. So give it away, project it. It belongs to that presence, that consciousness, that beingness. And then again, what happens is you put your sense of me right here somewhere. So you, you suddenly are back in that space where you see, first of all, I'm not this. This all happens inside of the I am. The I am could also be visualized as a snow globe or a sphere inside of which everything happens. And the feeling of consciousness then would simply be, or I am consciousness would be the edge of that bubble, the substratum, what the bubble is made of. That's the feeling of presence, consciousness, isness, beingness, I am, I exist. But since you give even that away and you visualize it outside of yourself, you actually place yourself slightly above it experientially. I mean, I'm just totally projecting onto you that this is, that you'll have the same experience as I do. Uh, but mechanically, I believe we're all the same. So it works the same for everyone. So at least give it a shot, see if it works. You can do it right now. Something, something is aware of your body hearing my voice. Now, it's very tempting to believe that it's you that is receiving my voice outside yourself. But the sensation of you over here, the world or me out there, I am out here, right? You're out there or you're out here, I'm out there for you. All of that is just a sensation. But you're fooled by it. You're thinking from inside of the sensation, so it seems real. But if you observe it from outside the sensation, you see the feeling of separation is not separate from the I am. So you can feel as separate as your mind wants to create the feelings of separation. A feeling of separation happens, let's say you're having a feeling. This is a feeling of separation. It's happening inside the I am. It's non-separate from the observer, from the consciousness. So it resolves everything. Just keep giving everything away, disown everything, back to the I am. It's such a simple practice, and it's immediately it starts to work. You'll see. Um, I think. <laughs> you got to try it out. Again, all you do when you give away your pleasure or you give away your pain to the I am, all you're doing is you're setting yourself free from the body identification. Because you're giving whatever your feelings you're having, you're giving it away to God, to isness, to presence, to the bubble of consciousness, to the experiential realm of the creator, to the perceiver, to the experience, or to awareness, whatever you want to label that which remains when you're not thinking or before you start using words. That sheer, simple existence, that feeling of I am, which is the first concept, it's the first principle, it's the first creation. And it's the only creation, because everything else happens inside of it. The I am is the first, only, and final, when you're on your way back, when you're on your way down, when you begin the process of evolution, the, the isness, the beingness, the presence, the consciousness, it's the first manifestation. Even though it looks like there's other consequent manifestations, you begin to realize it's all one manifestation, so it's the first, the only, and then when you go back to go beyond it, you realize it is the final concept. So when you let go of thoughts and you give it all away, 
to the primary concept, then you're free from all the variety, from all the chaos, from all the identification and separation beliefs. And you start to feel the sense of inclusiveness, everything dancing inside of the beingness somehow, including your body. So you no longer really feel like you're your body. The more you practice this, you see that everything is your body. Basically, this whole thing is your body. You just thought it was inside the nervous system, but it's not. It's all part of it. That's also where love begins to come from. And you can actually feel inside the nervous system of other people. You can scan them for diseases. and You can just start to feel and see things the more you practice this. Because it actually is your body. There's no limitation to that. But if you always locate yourself here, you're not going to have that expansion. You're not going to have that sense of warmth, of oneness, of sort of oceanic, wave-like presence. You can never have that from the body point of view. If you do, it's always going to be egoic. It's always going to be owned. It's always going to be claimed as long as you project the I am I feeling into the body as a small portion of the entire painting of the universe. Then for as long as you do that, it doesn't matter how spiritual your experiences are, from that sense of I am the body, it's always going to be polluted, it's always going to be a fetish, it's never going to be a pure spiritual offering. It's, you know, we're talking about like the tantric kind of things, for example, where that becomes very obvious, um, where it can be a very pure thing, but it can also be a very sort of polluted, like where the pleasure gets polluted, or any field, but that's just one where it's like mixed in with spirituality and the spiritual ego and like the glorification and like I just want that. So it's a good example to use. Um, but that's all because it's still experienced from the point of view of I'm the body. That assumption has not yet been annihilated. It's not yet been seen through. It's not yet been let go of. But if you give also your sexual experiences pleasurable experiences, meditative experiences, away to the I am, you realize, oh, the body meditating, because it feels it wants to or needs to, actually also happens inside the I am. So somehow, the me that I thought I was is sitting down in a particular posture to realize the I amness inside of which the meditator is meditating, trying to realize that inside of which it's already happening. If you don't project the sense of me into the body to begin with, but you let it be free or out there, then the sense of oneness begins to emerge, and that is meditation. Then you just maintain awareness of that I am, which cannot be pinpointed to be here or there or everywhere or nowhere. It's that point inside of which all locations occur. All possibilities occur due to consciousness. All experience occurs inside of consciousness. It's that simple. And you can realize it now. You can feel it. You can be it. And you can do that while you're walking around. And if it feels like you're sort of shifting into weird states or whatever, then don't do it while you're walking around on a busy street or don't do it if you're driving. Use common sense. But my experience has been that this has been a very clean experience and I'm more aware. Even though I'm not aware as I usually would be. Let's say the normal state is I am walking and I'm paying attention to walking. And maybe I'm walking barefoot somewhere in India and there's like thorns and stuff. So I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm the thinker, I'm the doer. I'm like registering from my point of view that there's a thorn over there. So oh, I'm gonna put it right there. I'm the doer of that. What I've noticed, but try it out for yourself using common sense. Don't do it in the most dangerous physically uh, chaotic situations, do it in peaceful, safe situations. Um, what I found is that when I quote unquote zoom out, give this back to the I am, realize that it's the I am that's creating all this, suddenly my body just goes however it goes. I'm not even really aware of the body because I'm aware of the I am that's aware of the body. So I'm right here. So my awareness is expanded beyond its regular point, and I'm aware of the root. I'm maintaining awareness of the beingness inside of which the walking is projected and is being experienced. Does that make sense? Somehow, everything works perfectly. Somehow, everything flows perfectly in that state. And I notice that when I'm thinking again as a body, as a mirror, that's when I make mistakes, more so. And there, there's just a certain flow and in intelligence that happens. Another way in which I notice this is like doing yoga. 
if I do yoga as a body, and let's say it's, it's, a, it's a pose where you're like balancing on one foot or something like that, and you're like this because you're the body, because you're the doer of it. Whereas if you then start to focus on the beingness which experiences the body, then suddenly the body just balances itself. You don't have to do anything. There's no control. It's the beingness that's completely stable, which is what yoga has the method into. So you'll notice this with everything that you do. Just give it back to God, and all is fine. Do the same with your emotions. Don't own them, because then they're your problem. Don't own them, because then they become your responsibility. They become your karma. They become your process. You know, you're going to move through these healing phases anyway. The body, the emotions, they're going to unravel anyway. The more you give it up to God, the more you have faith and surrender. And don't think anything about your emotions. Don't come to conclusions about yourself and other people. Just give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Keep giving it to the I am. It's the I am that's experiencing the emotions. Not you, unless you say that's you. Technically... If you observe it objectively, it is the consciousness of which, which appears to the facelessness of you. Somehow, magically, this consciousness appears to you. You just projected yourself all the way into the dream inside the dreamer. But technically, you are aware of the one who is experiencing everything. So don't project yourself inside of that dream, inside of a little container of that painting, and then say that everything happens to you. That's the big mistake of body identification. That's why this whole spirituality thing of embodiment is kind of, it just doesn't go that far, in my opinion, the whole, no, you should come into your body and stuff. There's some relevances to that for certain individuals at certain moments. But it's just because people don't understand this. They, can't, they haven't gone beyond that primary identification. So they reduce spirituality to having something to do with the body. And it do, just simply doesn't have anything to do with the body. It doesn't deny the body, but it, it's not originating in the body. The body is a great tool. It's a great method. But spirituality doesn't really have anything to do with feeling the ground underneath your feet and like feeling the air fill your lungs, and mm, that's, that's all good. That's a step up from unconsciously scrolling on your phone or like being busy all the time, not, not being present. It's definitely a step up. But it's just to clear the space, to be able to see clearly so you can expand and give everything back to God. If you give everything back to God, simultaneously you disown everything inside this, and you place yourself right there in between the absolute and the consciousness which is now responsible for your world. You're not responsible for your world. Again, doesn't mean that outwardly you don't act as if you are responsible for your actions and your words. It simply means that even when that's happening, that too, you taking accountability and like following certain agreements when you made that agreement or whatever it is, you taking responsibility for your emotions and expressing that, that too is happening inside the I am, not to you. Again, that's not you either. So in the truest sense of the word, not in a relative sense, in the more absolute sense of the word, nothing has ever happened to you. I guarantee you, when you get a glimpse of that freedom, you'll start to appreciate the broccoli required to get to the ice cream. Suddenly you're like, fuck, I want to feel this way. I want to practice. Because then it gets really amazing. It gets really amazing. Really amazing. More amazing than you think. 